Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. <clears throat> it's a tradition in microbiology to start with uh, gram positive, gram negative bacteria. Who is Louis Pasteur? The front 50 pages, if you can survive in a microbiology textbook as undergraduates, it's great. But when you are preparing for an exam, whether it is a MBBS second year exam or whether you are preparing for a MD entrance or USMLE step one, the most favorite topic of the examiner to start your preparation is with the step to Kokhai is what we are going to start. We welcome our online students, Dr. Parikshit, Ritu, Brahmaramba, Harika, Nikunj, Jeevita Reddy. And the students of Vizag, Tirupati, Varangal, Karnul, and all the other places. <clears throat> Streptococci, why do you remember, doctor? Because they are gram positive, non motile, catalase negative organisms. That's the reason you need to remember. This is one of the favorite MCQ in the exam. A little critical story is given. Culture report is showing the presence of gram positive, non motile. Catalase negative organism. Immediately, what should come to your mind? Streptococci. They are the aerotolerant anaerobes and they can grow fermentatively even in the presence of the oxygen. Some organisms will die if they are exposed to oxygen. Some organisms can grow only if oxygen is available. So, there is a difference which you need to appreciate. Can you, online students, can you tell me, is the voice is loud and clear for all of you? Is there any echo or is it uh, loud and clear? Please uh, punch into the chat window. So, streptococcus pyogenes, whenever we say, the plane of division is perpendicular to the long axis of the chain. Thus, reason, the streptococci will be organized in the form of uh, a chain is what need to be basically remembered. <clears throat> Streptococcus pneumoniae, if you take, they are in the form of pairs, couples in the love garden, loving couples in the garden otherwise. So, they are called diplococci. Staphylococcus aureus, classically will be in the form of grape-like clusters, is one of the favorite MCQ of the examiner, grape-like clusters. So, how do we classify streptococci, doctor? Basically, based on the property of the eco, I mean, of the hemolysis. Sorry, my, I am biased about the chat window, suddenly. So, uh, hemolytic properties of the blood agar is the basis of classification. Whenever a question is asked, we are not very sure what are these streptococci growing. We want to know whether they are pathogenic or commensal streptococci. What is the first step in your microbiological evaluation to characterize a given streptococcus? What is your answer? It is the hemolysis which is the first step in the classification of the streptococci is what you have to basically remember. So, when you call alpha hemolytic streptococci? There will be a green pigment, as what you can see, which will be forming a ring around the colony in the blood agar, you call it as alpha hemolytic. Beta hemolytic will lead to a complete hemolysis of the RBCs, that's the reason there is a clear ring around the colony. Gamma hemolytic means there is no color change or no lysis, no green pigment, then you call it as Gamma hemolytic is what you need to remember. Yeah. <clears throat> now, doctor, this is the most important table or chart which you need to have in your mind. Alpha hemolytic, which one come under that? Streptococcus pneumoniae, Streptococcus viridans. Right? Beta hemolytic, 
streptococcus pyogenes and streptococcus agalactosi which is group b gamma hemolytic enterococcus this is the fundamental point that you need to understand then how do we differentiate these two alpha hemolytic species pneumonia and viridans optogen sensitive bile soluble quelling positive is equal to streptococcus pneumoniae the rest optogen resistant not soluble in the bile no capsule is equal to viridans is what need to be remembered <clears throat> one of our uh, classmates uh, uh, used to remember how he used to remember is uh, don't tell me that dr murli bharadwaj teaches like this later on in telugu in the language of telugu no means vaddu v for vaddu viridans will say vaddu naak emi vaddu i don't want anything so it has no capsule it is not bile soluble it is not optogen sensitive is viridans whatever the way you remember but ultimately microbiology is another forest of uh, how to remember is the challenge okay doctor with a due apology to all our hindi tamil and uh, the other uh, 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 because in tamil no is ille but uh, in telugu it is vaddu these viridans viridans vaddu so optogen not sensitive not bile soluble no capsule now doctor pyogenes and agalactosi in the beta hemolytic streptococci how do you basically differentiate <clears throat> see pyogenes and agalactosi are first of all beta hemolytic b is for beta hemolytic the same b basitrisin differentiates the two basitrisin sensitive will be pyogenes which is group a basitrisin resistance is agalactosi everything is fine sir b is basitrisin b is beta hemolytic we will remember but ultimately when we go and sit in the exam hall we will forget whether pyogenes is sensitive or agalactosi is sensitive there is a way to remember agalactosi is group b pyogenes is group a as medical students we are all sensitive initially in the first year by the time we become to come to final year we become resistant right so the later one b group b agalactosi is basitrisin resistance the early one group a pyogenes is basically basitrisin sensitive the no hemolysis is basically the enterococcus which include enterococcus faecalis and fecium are the two species now this another dirty table which we need to master <clears throat> how do we differentiate streptococci due to the hemolysis we divide it into beta on one hand alpha or gamma suppose if it is beta what are the two possibilities it can be pyogenes or it can be group b agalactosi so if it is beta then do a camp test right i'll i'll tell you later what is camp test it is one test to differentiate if it is camp positive then it is group b agalactosi if it is camp test negative then what are the possibilities look whether the colony is large colony or a small colony if it is a large colony then it is more likely to be streptococcus pyogenes if it is a small colony it is going to be vaddu viridans is what you need to fundamentally remember so this is one way of uh, 
reaching to a conclusion what type of colony it is, camp test. Suppose if it is alpha or gamma, then if it is CAM positive, there is no second thought. Egalectasy is CAM, group B. But if it is not CAM positive, then you need to do optogen test, the next one. If it is optogen positive, it is Streptococcus pneumoniae. If it is negative, then uh, you need to check whether it is group D antisera positive or not. If it is group D, if it is group D positive, then it is Streptococcus bovis. If it is not, then look for group C antisera. If it is group C negative, then it is viridans. That's how we conclude from this angle. So, viridans can be beta hemolytic or even alpha or gamma hemolytic also is what you have to ultimately remember. Whereas, if you take streptococcus pneumoniae, it is not beta hemolytic. It is, it can be either alpha or gamma hemolytic. Streptococcus bovis can be alpha or gamma but not beta hemolytic. Beta means only two. Group A, group B. Group A is streptococcus pyogenes. Group B is basically viridans. Uh, sorry, uh, egalectasy, streptococcus egalectasy. Got it, doctor? So, this is the, if you understood this, you understood everything. Any exam, entire story is in this little table. You need to playfully remember it and go to the exam confidently. Okay, doctor? Now, what is the serological grouping? <coughs> serological uh, grouping. <clears throat> Lansfield, on the basis of the carbohydrate C substance, has classified the beta hemolytic group into group A, B, C until U. Now, what do you call as group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, streptococcus pi genes? Why you need to remember as a clinician post streptococcal glomerulonephritis? Rheumatic fever. Everything is because of this dirty fellow called Streptococcus pyogenes. It is very common to have a nasopharyngeal carriage of the Streptococcus pyogenes. And the main difference between Staphylococcus versus Streptococcus pyogenes is um, <clears throat> fundamentally means unlike the Staphylococcal uh, species, Streptococcus pyogenes cannot survive in the environment. It can only survive in a human nasopharynx comfortably for that wonderful air conditioned environment of the throat. Now, it is the human carriers, the infected patients who are the source of it. So, how will you recognize this Streptococcus? For that matter, any Streptococcus, it is because of linear chain like appearance is what need to be remembered. There are two ways it can be transmitted from one human being to the other human being. So, what is the way? Person to person, by skin contact or even through the respiratory tract. Whenever you grow it in a liquid culture, it typically grows like this, like a long chain is what you have to basically remember. Then how is the capsule? Capsule is made up of hyaluronic acid which is very, very similar to that of the human connective tissue, especially that of the valves. And this capsule, the reason, is not immunogenic because human tissues are also similar and it is also similar. Why will our body will react against it, doctor? It won't. So, it is not immunogenic. Then what is the role of the capsule of the streptococcus pyogenes? It is basically antiphagocytic. It prevents and escapes from being captured by the phagocytes. So, what are the vigilance factors of the group A streptococcus is one of the important uh, issue. The capsules hyaluronic acid will help it to evade from the immune responses of uh, the host by being antiphagocytic. 
the protein F will help in addition. M protein will enable it to evade once more the phagocytic action. Lipoticoic acid which typically acts like a toxin and it itself produces certain enzymes. The streptococcus pyogenes, streptokinase and hyaluronidase. It will also produce streptolysin O and S, streptodornase, C5A peptidase, streptococcal chemokine protease. These are all mainly for evading the host defense mechanisms. Whereas streptokinase and hyaluronidase is for the organism to invade the human host is what you have to basically remember. Ultimately, it also leads to streptococcal toxic shock syndrome and for that it produces the streptococcal pyrogenic exotoxin is what we have to ultimately remember. So that is the reason doctor, by the time we come to final year medicine in MBBS, we only remember M protein because M protein, rheumatic fever, pediatrics, ward rounds, we still remember it. But there is a lot of story behind. We will also remember AS4 titus, streptolysin bo. We remember streptokinase because we give it as a thrombolytic. Remaining things we forget, but they are also important. You must know which defenses are meant for invasion and what are for evasion is one of the important issue for the examiner. So we have a capsule made up of hyaluronic acid, a peptidoglycan cell wall, the pili and the M protein. So these are all the things that need to be remembered. One to comments about each of them. M protein. Basically, if there is no M protein, the streptococcus pyogenes is no more infectious. And any other streptococci which doesn't have protein, M protein is not that infectious as streptococcus pyogenes. But these M proteins are highly variable. That means, when there is an M protein, our body knows how to produce an antibody against it. Then why once more we get a sore throat every year? Because every time, there is just like influenza, antigenic variation. M protein also varies and earlier antibodies do not give any memory for the new infection of the streptococci. The new strains, new M protein form is what need to be remembered. So, these M proteins are antiphagocytic in nature. They basically form a coat and that will be interfering with the complement binding is what I want to underscore to all of you. <coughs> now, group A, since uh, streptococcus pyogenes belongs to group A beta hemolytic, you have one C substance of the Lansfield's classification called group A specific C substance. It has got the mannose and n acetyl glucosamine, fundamentally polysaccharides. And all the group A, group A organisms, fundamentally contain this uh, group A specific C substance. Then fibronectin binding protein called protein F is also present, which will help it to uh, attach to the pharyngeal epithelium is what we need to ultimately remember. Then one to comments about the exotoxins which are produced by the group A streptococci. Pyrogenic exotoxins, streptolysin bo, streptokinase, hyaluronidase, C5A peptidase and streptodornases. So what are the streptodornases basically? They are the DNAs which are being produced by the streptococcus which will be breaking down the DNA in the necrotizing tissues is what you have to remember. Now doctor, what are the clinical syndromes which are caused by the streptococci? We should not have confusion. Fundamental confusion is one, which are staphylococcal infections, which are streptococcal infections, if this is being asked, people try to club one with the other. So, cellulitis, if I ask you a question, most common organism leading to cellulitis, not an abscess. Cellulitis, even this is a favorite MCQ even in the surgery also, streptococcus pyogenes, pharyngotonsillitis and pharyngitis in ENT, otolaryngology, streptococcus pyogenes, impetigo, 
these are the classical lesions of the impetigenous lesions okay now impetigo what is the most common organism staphylococcus aureus is one of the very important organism but originally in the initial days of the poor antibiotic uh, uh, days streptococcus pyogene is a classical cause of uh, impetigo but more common is due to staph erysipelas another favorite question of examiner that fiery red advancing erythema on the face and the lower limbs streptococcus pyogenes is what you need to fundamentally remember then one of the causes of the puerperal sepsis is streptococcus pyogenes but group b streptococcus is more important to be remembered for the neonatal meningitis and puerperal sepsis streptococcal toxic shock syndrome earlier days where uh, the vaginal tampons were uh, much more uh, commonly used those days it used to be much more rampant but it has come down slowly now what are the two common post streptococcal sequelae of the streptococcus pyogenes infection one is acute rheumatic fever one of the common mcq is how much will be the duration between the appearance of the rheumatic fever and uh, the development of the sequelae called acute rheumatic fever around 2 to 3 weeks there's a cross reaction between the antigens of the heart and joint tissues and uh, the m protein of the streptococcus but what kind of joint involvement it is will it leave any permanent sequelae no sir so what did they say rheumatic fever licks the joints and bites the heart is what you need to remember because the arthralgia arthritis they are all temporary phenomena they don't lead to any permanent sequelae like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis they don't affect as you all know very well so how can you prevent this if you happen to give the penicillin within the first 10 days after the onset of the acute pharyngitis then you can be able to very wonderfully treat so doctor rheumatic fever m protein cross reactivity you know very well now doctor glomerulonephritis now what is the let us not talk routine things let us talk what is most interesting for examiner examiner will ask you a question see doctor sore throat is there rheumatic fever is there if sore throat is there will it lead to glomerulonephritis also what is your answer yes right if the skin infection is there will it lead to glomerulonephritis yes will the skin infection lead to rheumatic fever no so glomerulonephritis occurs one week after either impetigos the skin infection or pharyngitis whereas rheumatic fever occurs only following the pharyngitis not the skin infection that's the point we need to basically appreciate one more difference when there is a pharyngitis you have given penicillin within the first 10 days you can avoid development of rheumatic heart disease but if you look at the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis if you treat with penicillin the streptococcal skin disease or pharyngitis can you be able to prevent development of psgn post streptococcal glomerulonephritis no sir there is no evidence that penicillin protects against the psgn penicillin only protects against the rheumatic heart disease this is the finest point which you need to catch up in this topic okay doctor gold medal point i am telling you so um pharyngitis or impetigo within one week can lead to the development of acute glomerulonephritis so what is a very classical thing when we come to when we talk about psgn and we don't talk about that uh, hump like appearance bump like appearance of the deposits there is no fun in that right doctor 
Now, how do you identify streptococcal pyogenes? We use what is called as a rapid antigen detection test. Latex uh, antigen kits will be available. Using these kits, the latex particles, if they clump together, then you will conclude that the group A streptococci is there in the patient sample. That's how you basically conclude. They have very high level specificity. If clumping is there, means streptococci is there. But streptococci is there means there is no guarantee that clumping will be there. What is the situation called? Sensitivity is variable, but specificity is definitely there. Okay, doctor. If you read very well for exam, is there any guarantee that you will win the exam? Yeah? Definitely it should be there. But if you win the exam, it is not always sure that you read very well. Because reading very well is a relative term. If everybody in the reading room reads only for one hour, if and if we read for two hours also, it is more reading. Right? So, it do not depend on... Uh, the second part. Now, doctor, this is the typical posterior pharynx and petechiae and exudates in a 12 year old girl, and in her the rapid antigen test is typically positive. Now, if you grow it on a sheep blood agar, what will be your microbiology person will be reporting you on telephone? You are a medicine resident, you have sent the throat swab in a case of rheumatic fever suspecting streptococcus pyogenes. What do you expect a call from the microbiology lab? Sir, there are small opalescent colonies with beta hemolysis. That word is the music in your ear to discover that there is streptococcus pyogenes. Your suspicion clinically is right. Hemolysis is because of the streptolysin yes, which basically damages the mammalian cells and that lead to the development of cell lysis. Then what is a very important property about streptococcus pyogenes, doctor? Pyogenes is group A in beta hemolytic. So, besitrecin sensitive. The group B in beta hemolytic are all besitrecin resistant. That is how you differentiate. Streptococcus, anyway, we are not expecting that it should be catalase positive. If it were to be catalase positive, we would have taught it as grape like clusters of staphylococci. So, it is catalase negative, no surprise. Optochin resistant it is. The streptococcus pyogenes is optochin resistant. So, let us see. This is the group A streptococcus. This is other than group A, say group C. The growth is unaffected by the bacitrocin disc. But there is no growth around the bacitrocin. Bacitrocin is like an antibiotic. Around that, this can't grow. Hence, we call group A as bacitrocin sensitive is what you need to basically remember. So, once more, speaking the same story. So, what are you going to remember, doctor? <coughs> um, gram positive cocci. If you do a catalase test, if it is positive, think of grapes, staphylococci. If it is negative, streptococci. Grow it on the blood agar. If it is beta hemolytic, then grow it on bacitrocin disc. If it is sensitive, pyogenes. If it is not, then it is anything other than group A. Generally, group B. Then, if it is alpha hemolytic, grow in the presence of optochin disc. If it is sensitive, it is streptococcus pneumoniae. Whereas, if it is resistant, then it is any other alpha hemolytic streptococci. That is how we basically reach to a conclusion. So, we use the group A antiserum and conduct a precipitin reaction in order to discover that it is definitely group A organism only, that is a streptococcus pyogenes, another laboratory finding. Similarly, A smooth titers is a way to quantitate the presence of the infection. Similarly, anti dornes antibodies against DNA is a very important thing, especially if you have a streptococcal infection of the skin. 
ASPO is not that good as an investigation. ASPO titles in impeditionous lesions. It is the antidinase B antibody is more sensitive for the skin infections. Favorite MCQ of the examiner, which you need to be very, very sure. Now, doctor, group B, hemolytic streptococci. What is a very important organism? Streptococcus agalactase is what you are going to remember. It is gram positive, catalase negative, hence it is not staphylococcus. And uh, where do you find group B, doctor? Vaginal cervical tract of the female carriers, urethral mucous membrane in the case of the male carriers and also in the GIT. And basically among the adults, it is transmitted sexually and uh, it can also be when the baby is passing to the mother's vaginal tract, then he can get infected with the group B streptococci, which is the normal resident of the vaginal cervical tract of the mother and of the females is what need to be remembered. So these are the typical streptococcus agalactase colonies. And uh, what is the difference between pygenes and agalactase we said doctor mainly? Once more, let us be quite sure. Bacitracin. Bacitracin sensitive is pygenes, resistance is agalactase is what you are not going to forget. So why do you want to remember agalactase? Because it is a main cause of the meningitis and septicemia in the neonates with a very high mortality rate. And postpartum endometritis if it develops in a unhygienically delivered female, post delivery living in an unhygienic ward, then endometritis is due to the group B streptococcus which is streptococcus agalactase is what need to be remembered. Fortunately, most of these group B streptococci are highly sensitive to penicillin and ampicillin. Why it is important? Why are we worried so many antibiotics are there? Why are we loving and being very happy that it is penicillin sensitive? Because penicillin is safe in pregnancy. So if you want to avoid this group B streptococcal infection, you can still give penicillin G. If somebody had a prolonged labor after rupture of membranes, then giving her penicillin G is a way to avoid the development of any postpartum infections or neonatal meningitis is what we need to understand. So there's a reason pregnant carriers, you need to treat them with ampicillin during the labor if there is any risk factors that there is a possibility of the group B streptococcus infecting the newborn. Premature rupture of membranes or prolonged labor if it is there in the history, then you need to give them the, the treatment with ampicillin during labor. Then interpartum prophylaxis you need to give with the group B streptococcal carriers by giving antibiotics to decrease the chance of a neonatal sepsis because of this group B streptococcus tomorrow as an obstetrician you are not going to forget group B endometritis postpartum neonatal infections etc etc. Now doctor streptococcus pneumoniae what is the importance of this? It is gram positive, non motile, no tension. We are not expecting it to be motile, we are not expecting it to be catalyst positive. What are we possibly expecting it to be? Encapsulated, cocci. Lancet shaped is a classical description that applies to the pneumococcus. Whenever you see pneumococcus, it is like the love pairs in the park. So, diplococcus pneumonia is being the name give awarded to streptococcus pneumonia. It is basically alpha hemolytic, alpha hemolytic and uh, sensitive to optochin. If the optochin is there around that, it won't grow. Whenever it is grown, it typically lead to alpha hemolysis. These are the two things about streptococcus pneumonia. Now comes clinical medicine. If I say not a nosocomial pneumonia, not a hospital acquired pneumonia, but a community acquired pneumonia, the most common cause, there is no second thought. Streptococcus pneumonia should be remembered. In adults, the most common cause for the bacterial meningitis 
If that is the question, your answer is streptococcus pneumoniae. Similarly, it can lead to otitis media, it can lead to sinusitis, mastoiditis, etc., etc. Why will people die after 70, doctor? When you are taking care. As one of my uh, very good friend is um, a cardiologist, but he is a very good uh, internal medicine guy. If you find pneumonia, bomb it, burn it, blast it with antibiotics. Otherwise, patient will die. That's a rule. Any admitted patient under your care above the age of 70 showing a patch of pneumonia on the x-ray. If you have taken lightly and thought, let me give oral tablet and go home and see tomorrow one more x-ray, means patient will be, you need to attend his funeral next day morning. If there is a pneumonia, some of you are going to be top emergency clinicians, finest in your breed in another four to five years. So, pneumonia, x-ray, elderly man, inpatient, bomb it. That is a very important rule that should not be forgotten. Now, smokers, older adults, those who have chronic illness, very young children, they are all at the great risk. Now, I come to the most favorite question of examiner. What is the most important virulence factor in the entire story of pneumococcus? It is the capsule, bacterial capsule, is what you need to remember. Question number two. If I want to classify the pneumococci into dirty type like type 3, good type type like non-type 3, then what is the basis? It is the capsule which will classify the entire pneumococci into type 1, type 2, type 3, type 3 is very dirty, very bad, highly mortal. We say no, that is all basis of on the cap capsule. It is a polysaccharide capsule. It is antigenic, antiphagocytic in its function. So, doctor, this is a high power view where you can see the diplococci along with that swollen capsule in a Quellens reaction. If you give a anti-capsular antiserum, then the capsule will swell up and that lead to Quellens reaction. Pili, what is their importance? The clinical isolates which express the pili are basically more virulent in nature. And what is one more special thing about the pili and a bit of microbial genetics? They can, that intelligence to produce pili is transmitted horizontally through conjugation is what you need to appreciate. That means if a virulent roommate meets a very virulent classmate in the same room joining, then this guy also learns how to take a cigarette, how to have a drink, etc., etc. So, it is horizontally transmissible by conjugation that genetics is what need to be remembered. Now, doctor, choline binding protein A is next important uh, factor in pneumococcus. It is an adhesin. It enables the pneumococcus basically to attach to the carbohydrates on the epithelial cells in the nasopharynx. Pneumococcus also produce autolysins, which will be able to hydrolyze the biological cell and uh, it produces a pneumolysin, which is a very, very important virulence factor. And pneumolysin basically, once produced, initiates all the pro-inflammatory cytokines, making pneumococcus a interleukin bomb. The moment it is being dropped into our body, all our inflammatory cells get activated and they do a lot of destruction. Pneumolysin also inhibits the PMN leukocytes and hel helps being a antiphagocytic factor. It will also activate the complement is what you need to remember. Now doctor, let's talk about the pneumococcus as clinician why it is important for us. Acute bacterial pneumonias, it is a streptococcus pneumonia, very common cause, leading cause of mortality especially in the older people who are relatively immunocompromised it is very important and uh, another very common question 
what is the most common bacterial cause of the pneumonia in the people who had influenza post influenza pneumonia streptococcus pneumoniae yes you should be your answer like a parrot don't think of h influenza don't think of pseudomonas don't think of anything think of only streptococcus pneumoniae most common cause of the post influenza pneumonia is yes, what you need to remember otitis media if i say in the children most frequent cause of the otitis media you need to think of pneumococcus then in few people who had uh, autosplenectomy like sickle cell disease patients in such people if the spleen is not there our body cannot be able to opsonize the organisms what is the meant by opsonins sandhya opsonins what is the purpose of them opsonins will increase the recognizability of an antigen if opsonin plus antigen is there you can recognize antigen very easily your immune system so that's the reason those who don't have spleen or splenectomized or autosplenectomized as in case of the sickle cell their ability to produce opsonins is missing if the opsonins are not there then the pneumococcal bacteremia and sepsis will occur then otitis media most frequently caused by the pneumococcus is what we need to ultimately appreciate then coming to meningitis this is a very interesting question once upon a time once upon a time h influenza was the leading cause of the bacterial meningitis but after a baby is born how many vaccines in the modern era he is receiving opv bcg dpt pneumovac hvac hemo hemophilus influenza vac until he says no i don't want injections until then we keep on vaccinating him it's very painful to uh see so many vaccines once upon a time didn't exist right the new vaccine is anti md entrance failure vaccine so if that is received future if the baby becomes uh, a doctor he will easily get uh, in md entrance somebody may discover and start a anti md entrance uh, failure vaccine huh? so that is also possible so doctor after the advent of the hemophilus influenza vaccine the streptococcus pneumonia has now become the most common cause for the development of the neonatal i mean uh, of the bacterial meningitis is what need to be remembered now doctor how do you recognize how do you recognize <clears throat> the oh i am very happy today we have about uh, 61 plus viewers online with another 100 plus across the country <clears throat> of course the broadcast company has sent me a 1 lakh rupees uh, uh, bill that you are guys suddenly by midnight 12 o'clock indian standard time 11 o'clock 10 o'clock until early morning 4 o'clock uh, the video usage is becoming uh, very high uh the broadcasting company has sent me i said uh, what you have seen i gave a reply mail to the broadcasting company you have seen nothing when october comes when exams are before virtually entire world's content distribution network of your broadcast will be dedicated only for our md preparing aspirants they will not leave because they need to finish about some 1200 video clips huh? so that's the thing so i am very happy today we have a very good august crowd uh, to attend the microbiology beginning that's right doc now alpha hemolytic colonies under aerobic conditions at 37 degrees overnight growth is fundamentally streptococcus pneumoniae lancet shape gram positive and uh, optochin sensitive growth is inhibited very important property bile acids what is the effect of it the cells are lysed by the bile acids is an important property of the streptococcus pneumoniae which is frequently asked in the exam doctor <clears throat> quellens reaction and the capsular swelling you are not going to forget so typically gram positive diplococci is surrounded by capsules you are able to see which is a clear zone is all that capsule 
this is a polymorphonuclear leukocyte um, and uh, you are having the organisms are very small compared to PMNs but they are escaping the PMNs attacked by the PMNs huh? then um, whenever somebody grows a streptococci from the nasopharyngeal flora it is very difficult to decide whether it is a pathogenic streptococcus pneumonia or whether it is a commensal so what is a very important clue for differentiating that doctor once more optochin optochin sensitivity makes the streptococcus pneumonia that it is streptococcus pneumonia in spite of the optochin growth is happening means it is a normal pharyngeal flora commensal that's how you can differentiate as a quick test for the patients so optochin no growth around it is pneumonia and growth around that and resistance to optochin is streptococcus mitis like normal pharyngeal flora is what you are going to ultimately remember so this is in a spinal fluid you can see the presence of the streptococcus pneumonia on a fluorescent stain is what you need to basically remember now doctor what kind of vaccine is available for the pneumococcus we have two kinds of vaccines this is another important differentiator favorite question is now coming up we have one pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine which is against all the 23 serotypes of the streptococcus pneumonia but but what is the favorite question of the examiner when can you give this polyvalent pneumococcal vaccine containing 23 serotypes pneumovax 23 is there no when can you give after the age of two years before that if you place the baby doesn't know how to mount a immune response and remember that immune response to the vaccine okay but we are worried that it can lead to infection before that so what is the other vaccine available we have a pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 conjugate vaccine 13 which is effective even in the infants and toddlers that's what you need to basically remember it has got all the 13 pneumococcal antigens and uh, it is conjugated with uh, CRM197 CRM is not like customer relationship management but CRM197 which is a mutant non-toxic diphtheria toxin that and pneumococcal antigen are clubbed if that is clubbed what happened immunogenicity of that antigen which you are administering is improved and even if the child is less than two years starting from the age of six months to five years you can still be able to give this conjugate vaccine of the pneumococcus that is the point and between the two that is your 23 polyvalent vaccine is then which is not a conjugated one what is one more important difference this conjugated vaccine can also offer herd immunity if the child in your home is vaccinated the child in the street is also protected that is the beautiness of the concept of herd immunity right now doctor enterococci enterococci basically contains a carbohydrate substance which will be positive for the group d antisera so that is the reason it is being classified under group d streptococci and most important species that you need to know is enterococcus fecalis and fecium now if you look at the enterococcus we have already seen it can be alpha hemolytic it can be beta hemolytic it can uh, be gamma non hemolytic also anything is possible for enterococci as a rule enterococci are not virulent sir they are entero they are in the stomach if you enter into stomach it is like uh, the movie nemo so many fish so you have got a lot of flora and fauna inside the stomach intestines everywhere but if you are giving if the patient develops multiple antibiotic resistance and he is admitted under your care in hospital nosocomial infections are possible with enterococci 
even this virulent very silent calm going entrecocus also can raise if you admit your patient unnecessarily and treat him and make him get this with too many antibiotics so how will you evaluate doctor the entrecocus in microbiology basically the other non group d streptococci any other non group d it can be group a it can be group b or anybody versus enterococci the single reason you can differentiate is bile only enterococci can survive in the bile everybody else will die in the bile is it really difficult to remember no sir in intestine you are getting regularly bile if they don't know how to survive in bile how will they survive in human intestine so ability to survive in bile is a nature of enterococcus everybody else why they remain only in nasopharynx afraid to jump into intestine because of bile will kill it bile can't kill enterococcus that is a very important point you need to appreciate then it can hydrolyze the polysaccharide esculin and uh, it produces the black colonies on the esculin containing plates let us see that but uh, before that this is how pneumococcus plus bile viridans plus bile the difference who will grow who cannot grow you need to fundamentally appreciate pneumococcus can't grow whereas uh, the enterococci can grow and uh, uh, this is the bile esculin test we said no if you take enterococcus fecalis it can be able to hydrolyze the polysaccharide esculin and produce the black colonies on the esculin containing plates is the point that we need to appreciate now there are few more things about the way enterococci grow the way non enterococcal uh, streptococci can't grow which still belong to group d got now the earlier test is fundamentally to differentiate it from what to what non group d and the enterococcus which belong to group d then within group d you have non enterococcal group d and enterococcal group d how do you differentiate this another favorite mcq of the examiner unlike the non enterococcal group d the enterococcal group d can grow in 6.5% nacl it can yield a positive pyrazine amylase test called pyr test and uh, within enterococcus you have two species no that is fecalis and fecium it is by the sugar fermentation test they are differentiated but that is not asked in the exam thank god indole positivity indole negativity that is all the issue with the gram negative organisms we can bother at that time but positive pyrazine amidase 6.5% nacl you need to know difference between non enterococcal group d and enterococcal group d and between the group d and non group d bile esculin and bile solubility these are the important things that need to be understood so doctor how do you recognize enterococcus that this is it is the gamma hemolytic colonies 37 degrees in an aerobic atmosphere whatever is growing is empirically thought to be the enterococcus fecalis now doctor what are those non enterococcal non enterococcal group d streptococci which you need to remember streptococcus bovis what is the favorite question about streptococcus bovis a elderly patient who had colon carcinoma is developing bacteremia with a streptococcal species which back which is species it is is a favorite question you should remember streptococcus bovis especially colon cancer patients may 
Streptococcus bovis bacteremia will develop and that lead to development of endocarditis is what you need to remember. So, this is bilin esculin positive like any other group D organism. Group D organism. But it is a non enterococcal group D, no? So, how do you differentiate? It is PYR negative and it can't grow in 6.5 percent saline, making it Streptococcus bovis is all the story. So, examiner ultimately in exam will be giving all these permutations combinations. If you know the algorithm and above all know that Streptococcus is gram positive, not gram negative. Huh? So, uh, then you know everything. At the end of all this lecture, if you go to your uh, hostel and say, do you know Streptococcus is gram negative? Aaj bahut achha class ho gaya. Then your classmates will know how well you learned. So, do not say that. Okay. Uh, today I could not get, tomorrow I will start with uh, gram positive, gram negative, just general introduction of the organisms that uh, PPT is ideally the first to start, but anyway, streptococcus is also very important. Now, viridon streptococci. This has catalase negative, gram positive either alpha or beta hemolytic species and it is a very important part of the oral flora and relatively it is also virulent in nature that is the reason we need to remember viridans and it can lead to development of endocarditis subacutely. Then streptococcus mutans as dental students we need we would have remembered it more longer typically for dental caries. Now, if there is any abnormal heart valve, then these species will lead to endocarditis, that is viridans, etc., etc. Those who have rheumatic heart disease, congenital heart disease, etc., etc., if they undergo a dental procedure, the chance of developing a mutans or a viridans leading to the development of endocarditis is very, very high. That is all the story, doctor, about uh, streptococci, which you need to be very, very sure about.